Welcome back, universe, to the Mother's Day special. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, today we got my mom in the studio and Kathleen Dunbar. You know, this feels like those politicians when they get caught cheating and they have their wife in the <laughs> <store. laughs> I did such a poor monologue that I'm not going to subject you to it. So I'm going to give an intro here. Uh, Molly will put in Roy's intro for us. It was so bad. It was. I did a Fauci impression that turned into somebody else in the middle of it. <laughs> Nobody laughed. It was god awful. I laughed. There was. It was. It was bad. It was just so bad that I can't. If you want to see the worst bombing of anyone ever, go to the Facebook. <laughs> It is not the worst bombing. You're so hard on yourself. It was bad. You know how bad it was? I called William, like, the next day I messaged him in the morning. I'm like, hey, man, I'm in kind of a funk, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then he, he calls me later, and he's like, hey, man, how you doing? I'm like, yeah, I'm in a funk. I can't really write anything. He's like, oh, a comedy funk. I thought you were going to kill yourself. <laughs> That's how bad I bombed. I'm like, yep. Yeah, and also, William, if you thought I was going like, to kill myself, it was 12 hours later that you got back to me. But, yeah, so he's like, oh, no, all comedians go through the writing. You know, nothing's funny, and they get in a funk. And then he told me about all the stuff he's got going on and then gave me homework. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had to watch all that stuff. So, yeah. We've been busy. So, yeah. But this Mother's Day special is so awesome and hilarious that I did not want people to turn it off with my disaster. So I'm giving you this instead. <laughs> but Kathleen Dunbar and my mom are hysterical. hysterical. They're brilliant. So here's William uh, cleaning up the mess after I took a shit on the desk. So um, I just would like to say a few things about my uh, dearly departed mother. Um, I went to visit her down in New Orleans where she was living, and um, she told me we had to go buy a few cases of beer because she was banned from the corner bar near her house for fighting. I'm like, you're an old lady. Why are you fighting? She said, because that bitch owed me money. She don't pay me back. She's got money to drink. She don't have money to pay me back. I went over there and I snatched her red hair out by the gray roots. I'm like, Ma, you cannot fight. You're too old for that shit. So she gets back after six months. She's able to go back. She gets banned again this time for life. I'm like, what happened this time? She goes, well, somebody had too much to drink and they threw up in the ladies' room. And I said, so what? She goes, well... They forgot to take their false teeth out, and the false teeth went in the toilet and clogged up the toilet and flooded out the joint. And she said, it wasn't me. I'm like, well, where are your false teeth? She said, it's a coincidence. <laughs> I have to tell you, my mom is a battler. When I was a young kid, maybe 19, and we were there at the um, – Louisiana Jazz and Heritage Festival, and we were enjoying some music, and I was with my brother and my mom's boyfriend, who was a little bit older than me at the time, and I said, don't look. <laughs> but there are um, two girls laying on blankets, and they're laying on their stomach, and they're wearing tank tops, and you could just see right down their top. And of course, those both idiots turn and look when I say, don't look now, and my mother busted us all. <laughs> And she goes up to the girl and she says, excuse me. And there's music playing. And I just hear her voice through the crowd. Excuse me. And the girl's like, what? She says, They're looking at your boobies. I wanted to crawl in a hole. I was so embarrassed. And the girl said to me, did you get a good look? And I'm like, no. She said, well, here. And she pulled her top down and showed me her tits. It's New Orleans. And my mom called her a slut and slapped her. And then they started fighting. We all got thrown out. We are thrown out of the Jazz and Heritage Festival. <laughs> sneak back in. Let's climb the fence and sneak back in. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to jail with you tonight, lady. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>
And now, a word from our sponsor. Hi, I'm Jenny Shulka, Director of Human Resources at a family-owned and international company, Coldwell Banker Home Sale Realty. With three offices in southeastern Wisconsin and some of the top agents in the industry, we are here to serve you in all of your real estate needs, whether you are buying or selling. If you are interested in a career in real estate, we offer an in-depth training program to make you successful. Call us at 414-443-2030 or email roy at cbhsr.com. All right. Welcome back, Universe Off the Rails podcast. Thanks for cleaning up my mess there, Will. You're Ma, welcome. I blame you. <laughs> Why? Because you caused it. Because you brought him forth. <laughs> the Terminator should go back in time and kill you before I was born <laughs> oh. to save that monologue. <laughs> yeah. So we got my mom here and the very talented Kathleen Dunbar. Hey, All welcome, right. Kathleen. Hey, Kathy. thanks for having me, guys. Thanks Thank for you having so me. Sorry about my monologue there. I'll, I'll be Happy better. Mother's Day, Barb. Thank you. Same to you. Yeah, that Ooh. was a terrible set. Now I know why they pay me the big bucks. Yes. <laughs> why we're still yes. stuck in Wisconsin. <laughs> You're out in Vegas. 19 years already. Congratulations oh, on yeah. that. Ooh. Yeah, May 1st was my night. I actually arrived the night before. We were supposed to arrive May 1st, but we, are, we got in a day kind of a day early because we were planning on kicking around and taking our time, but we drove through, but yeah, May 1st is my official anniversary and best move I ever made. Best thing I ever did in my life. Besides having a son, it was the best thing I did was move to Las Vegas. I absolutely love it. Kathleen, mm -hmm. do you remember your going away party in Milwaukee? Absolutely. I have the whole thing on video. Oh, do you? Yeah. And you remember where that was? At the, uh, don't tell me, Victor's. Yep, Victor's. Yeah, yes. Victor's. I still go to Victor's every time I come back to Milwaukee. They have the best food. They really people, do. People don't realize that, that you can come in there and just have an incredible dinner, a beautiful glass of wine, and get laid. And it's uh, <laughs> all for under 30 bucks. Wow. <laughs> Tom Bob's like, where's that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's if put you can't late. get laid at Victor's, you're not trying to get laid. That's right. Ah, <laughs> I'm going to remember that. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> tell her, tell Hurricane I sent you, Barb. Okay. <laughs> Hurricane. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Cool. All right, Ma, let's just get right into it. Did you really wear pasties when you were a stripper? Or did you go all out? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to bring that up. Again. We're going right to it. Okay. Were you a stripper? Go ahead. For a really short time. <laughs> wow, good for you. Yeah. 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 That wasn't you on the beach in New Orleans, was it? No. <laughs> I don't know. William never forgets the titty. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Come on, Ma. <laughs> this is really going there, off the rails yeah, right off the bat. Right <laughs> now, I think you tried to save me last time you told me, like when I was 34, that you told me you were a stripper. And you said, oh, but I wore pasties. And I'm calling bullshit this mother. Well, day, then, so. no, that's an exotic dancer yeah. if you're wearing pasties. Yeah. That's that's an artist. That's... What did you wear? I wore pasties. <laughs> She's a classy yeah. lady. All right. And panties. <laughs> and panties. There you yeah. go. So you're basically in a swimsuit. Oh, Missy says kind of. she loves you. I always thought the difference was no gum. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, it's that's... pasties. Exotic dancer, stripper. Right. Okay. I always thought it was stripper yeah. was gum. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the you second know. requirement. Hey, okay. um, do you remember that? Um, I'm not going to name the strip club, but the uh, comedy club was underneath it. And the strip yes. club was up there. Okay. And uh, when they change girls, there's a guy that comes out and he wipes down the pole and that guy's wearing a tuxedo. That's a class joint. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> I often wonder, are they cleaning that pole or applying grease to that? Pole? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> De-lousing Probably it. Both. De-lousing. Probably both. Yeah. It's, a, it's a dual. We got a question from Jeff. He's asking you, Kathleen, if you recall if you featured for Tommy Sledge at the Stones on Leighton, 99 or 2000. <laughs> Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Leighton, the Stones. Oh. I don't. I apologize. Oh, no. Stooges, I'm sorry. Oh, Stooges. 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 Yes, I remember. Stooges, oh, are you kidding? I love Tommy Stooges. Sledge, with Tommy Sledge. You yes. Tommy Sledge. Yes, yes, I do remember that. Yes, with I Joey. do. Joey, Joey, that was my first time on stage was in Joey's bar. Joey, oh, Joey and, um, oh, they were that. She's just, we're still very good friends. They moved I, to Vegas for a very short while, and then they moved back to Wisconsin. But um, I first, loved that club. The first thing she told me, she said this. She said, don't eat at the Chinese restaurant next door. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Like, I didn't want to ask why. I don't know what they were serving there. She's like, don't eat any of that food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I um, uh, yeah, I do remember that club. I remember the one of the very. Here's was the problem. I can mention both names now because they're both closed. Um, my very first Milwaukee gig was at the Comedy Cafe on Brady Street, and JD for some reason liked me. I think it was because I was a girl and I dressed nice. I would always wear like a dress and a jacket and jewelry and high heels. I was clean, and I always did my exact time. And JD was a ball buster. Like he wouldn't tell me how much time I'm supposed to do till I literally was walking up to the stage. He would say, okay, tonight you're going to do uh, nine. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> you know, I'm a brand new con. Yeah. Oh, tonight oh, you're going to do 105 minutes. It's hard enough, let alone. Am I back? You're back. Yeah, you're back. Okay, sorry, Kevin Downey Jr. trying to call me. He wants to go to the bar. Um, <laughs> and I told him I had this interview today, not to bother me. Um, so I, I, I had worked at Comedy Cafe like three, four times before finally Joey gives me the pass and hires me to host her show. And I go up there and I go, I want to welcome you all to Stooges Comedy Cafe. Oh, oh no! Right, <laughs> and I didn't even know I said it till I got off the stage. And Joey's daughter was there. She was one of the bartenders. I, and I'm having a brain fart. William, what was the daughter's name? I don't remember. Um, I, I'm friends with her on Facebook, and I converse with her a lot. I'm just having a brain fart. It's too early. I still have alcohol in my brain. And she says, "Are you trying to kill my mother?" <laughs> I says, what? What did I do? She goes, you just said Stooges Comedy Cafe. I said, oh, I did not, which is like they hated each other, those two clubs. And I went, oh, shit. I just fucked up. And I thought she'll never hire me again, but she ended up hiring me again. But yeah, that was a that was a great club. That was a wonderful club. Good people. Yeah. Awesome. So what's yeah, the most so, unexpected thing you found out about childbirth when you were given birth? Uh, they want to keep living with you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean here's your baby take it home <laughs> i'm done did my job. i've just gone through a painful experience i'm feeling a little drained and now i have to take care of this thing 20 years <laughs> fuck off <laughs> Um, I think the thing that I really did not understand was um, just how quite intense a young boy's bodily fluids can accumulate. Oh. Mm -hmm. The very first time he was maybe a week old and crying all night, would not sleep. And of course, I'm completely inexperienced and I'm calling every aunt I know and saying, what do I do? Well, maybe he's hungry. I go, no, he won't eat. Um, or he just ate. Or is he wet? I just changed his diaper. I go, well, is he sick? I go, well, does he have a temperature? So I've never taken anyone's temperature rectally before. 
Ooh. So I got her on the phone and she goes, put them on his side. And infant babies don't move when you put them on the side. They just lay there like a brick. <laughs> and then you put Vaseline on the thermometer and then you, you slide it, you know, you slide it into the pooper. <laughs> and then you wait a minute. And I'm staring down at this thermometer and all of a sudden it starts to move, you know, <laughs> and it shoots across the room. God. And this, this shit, this shit, shit, shit. <laughs> it's on the wall. It's on the bed. It's on me. It's on the floor. And then he fucking fell asleep. <laughs> you found what was wrong. Yeah. You unplugged yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Yes. Oh my God. It was horrible. Um, and here's what was weird. When he was born, May 12th, that was Mother's Day. It was a Sunday. So um he was kind of born on Mother's Day. So Mother's Day and his birthday are always kind of our little day that we um so he'll be his birthday is Wednesday. He'll be um shit. Old. <laughs> she doesn't give out the exact. He's, he's got to be in his forties, right? Yeah, he's forty. He'll be forty. Two thousand seventy-four. So forty-seven. Wow. Forty-seven. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had him when I was four. Four. <laughs> <laughs> We're buying it. We're buying it. <laughs> I'm not old. I'm a slut. <laughs> oh, you know the funny thing is, Kathleen, because you guys—no, you don't know what the funny thing is. That's why they pay me the big bucks. Now, and I'm not going to ask you to like run your material, but you have a great story about when he got his first place. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's, but it just raising a kid, Barb. Right? And is that right. your only one? Do you have more? No. Oh no, no. My first one, we named him Head. And that, that that happened right at birth. I tell you, he was eight pounds ten ounces. The head was seven of it. <laughs> he had a big this, head. Yeah. This it this was, one this one here. Not, he's head. No, no, his, no, brother. No. his brother. Oh, his brother. Oh. His brother. So, head. so that that one's head, and this one's asshole. Yes. <laughs> yes. They call him Mo. Yeah, that was half was laid. Well, he come on. <laughs> I had him in the emergency room. Yeah, I came out immediately. He couldn't wait. Yeah. Wow. And now you've spent the rest of your life trying to get back there. Oh my God! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You are good, a bit of a mama's good boy. Good drugs. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, speaking of that, I got a question for you, William. What's that? Um, do you feel good about yourself? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Can't, can't sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's already a no. <laughs> feel good about yourself. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Not allowing me to call myself a comedian because I was supposed to be a doctor and my ma only has one thing. My son's not a doctor, but at least he's a comedian. And oh. you jump in. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's all she has left to hang on. Or I'm useless. Well, I'm just taking Kathleen up air. Kathleen is a comedian. <laughs> you ask her her opinion. I won't say a thing. No, you, you say it to say. my mom that your son's not a comedian. Uh, he, I already know. You just oh. saw his set. <laughs> no, the thing is, is that he was calling himself a comedian. I'm like, you you have a comedic podcast. You do comedic writings, but you don't get in front of an audience and perform yes. stand-up for them. And then it's all this semantics. Well, a comedian's not just a stand-up comedy. To me, a comedian is a stand-up comic. And it's if you don't go around and perform then you're not really a, well, you can't call yourself a comedian. I, I agree. Cause that's, it's actually like a, almost like a title of a job. I'm hiring a comedian. They expect you to be able to come and perform live in front of an audience for an hour. Um, that's what a comedian is. You could say, I'm a funny guy. I'm a humorist. Um, All right. I, I, I work on a, I work on a, a humor radio show. I, I get that all the time. I can't get my oil changed. Where out somebody saying you're comedian, I'm comedian. Yeah. And I go, what's, what's your name? Joe Schmitzel. Yeah, I never fucking heard of you. And then they go, 
Well, I did a show at, at Bill's Bar over on Eastern. Have you been to Bill's Bar? No. No, it's a little busy headlining at the, on the strip at the MGM. I'll go to open mics. So they think if they stop at an open mic and then, you know, and do two minutes of shit, you know, when it's shit, right, William? We've seen it. It is, yes. Remember the safe house? And there would oh, be yes. these guys that would come in. And do the same. Uh, God bless you, at least, sir. You're writing new material every week. That's right. huge. And and let's get real. We all write material, and then you know, one out of thirty actually is something that works. Well, that's, listen. You heard the, the monologue. Job. You heard the monologue. Would you consider that a humorist? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. I'm just saying. So you think- Barb, tell me more about the job. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's. Actually, like mm. shitting a bowling ball. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Only you can use that bowling ball, right? Yeah. <laughs> what, well, you can well, stick your fingers in the child too. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! No, that's gonna come out like way yeah. wrong. Holy crap! Look at the time. <laughs> that came out not like you meant it to come out. <laughs> Look, right. Let's hold up on that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> And this is the oh, thing. Get him out. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. don't think she understands how that works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. That that just so he that really is an asshole. That, that really. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that three finger grip. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so when you have a boy, where do you put that third finger? <laughs> well, he likes it in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> What is even happening? <laughs> <laughs> this has hey. never happened. This has never happened before. I'm the cleanest one here. <laughs> I told you she was dirty. I warned you. I love oh, it in God. the mouth. Thanks, Ma. That's great. All right. And has no filter. Have you put a curse on your own children? Because my mom has a curse she puts on her own children. Which one? Would you <laughs> which, hope you have which, one just, just like, like you? you. Oh, yeah. Yes. I used to hear that all the yeah. time. Oh, do you have kids? Do you have kids? No. That guy? <laughs> Asshole, do you have kids? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. I couldn't, I couldn't remember his name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? We're taking a couple weeks off of that bad joke monologue. <laughs> Take a few oh weeks God. off. His sperm probably commits suicide. <laughs> <laughs> That's just saying that your sperm does not want to create life. <laughs> well, let's, let's, get, let's get real, mom. First thing, his sperm has to find a woman. Okay. Oh, yeah. Molly! Molly's his woman. Oh no, Molly's his woman. I know it's oh. she's way out of his league, right? I know. <laughs> Molly, Molly, Eleven girl. Years. I know. Eleven years. <laughs> I can lick my eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see that because we made Molly put her fist in her mouth. List. We have that for the bonus episode. We got, no. we got that going on. What's this your What's your go to guilt trip on your kids? Because I know my one yeah your guilt trip that they don't ever come visit me they've only visited me i've been in vegas 20 years they've visited me twice you hear that kathleen's kids twice well now they have a child so that's the thing that that drove me nuts is when you know he had the baby he would say things to me like uh, i says well when are you going to come visit me mom we'd have to buy three tickets do you know how expensive children are (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah. <laughs> you know, she's fucking five. You have no idea what expensive is. Wait. Yeah, wait. I go, she gets to those teenage years where her shoe size changes every six months and they've got to be designer shoes or designer pants. Um, yeah, so he's and he makes good money. You know, it's not like they and she's a nurse, she makes good money. It's like, but you know, I'm tired of because I'm not coming to Wisconsin. I hear it's really bad there. The COVID. No, no we're all right. Somebody all- was telling me that's really, like, really bad. Now, what's your mask thing there? Do you got to wear masks? Uh, not really, we do. Places but... have stopped. Everyone, they're they're kind of 
most places aren't requiring it anymore and people are choosing either to or not to. I like that. Listen, no, mm-hmm. but yeah. you go into a lot of places. Mask are required if you go inside. Tony Evers is still the governor. So I'm not getting involved in politics, but trust me, it's not great. Yeah. So it so but it's there's no there's no state law that you have to have a mandate yeah there's no law there's no No. they've never made a law that's the first they did but they wiped it out you know it's a mandate it's not a law law goes to legislation and they vote and blah 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 no they never did that they just made a mandate but they never so they lifted the mandate in wisconsin yes yep okay so it's it's and again and a business decides they want to have a mask that's their right they can do that and if you don't like that fucking go someplace else right Mm -hmm. There go fucking someplace else. Seriously. Uh, How is it in my... Vegas? We have to wear a mask. <laughs> I heard we've got a friend that lives in Vegas, and she said they're very, very strict. I don't know if it's gotten any better, but you have to no, smoke you, the mask. You have to ma- you have to mask now. Um, but we're <laughs> opening up to a hundred percent June first. So we're at eighty percent right now, capacity. Right. So if you have a restaurant or a business, you have to only allow eighty percent capacity. But I'm telling you, Vegas is just packed. It's packed. Good. Every casino is open now. The only one that hasn't opened is the Palms on Flamingo. And that's part of the station casinos bought that years ago. And then we just found out it was just sold to a uh, Native American uh, oh, casino wow. people bought it. So, um, and that's a great casino. It went through a huge renovation a couple of years ago and it's just beautiful now. But um, yeah, we're we're busy. We're very busy. Uh, we're back, and um, the shows. I was at the Comedy Cellar last week, and every show sold out at eighty percent capacity. Now June first, we go to one hundred percent capacity, and the comedy shows here have been. Uh, most of the clubs have been Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, most of them two shows a night. It used to be seven nights a week, two shows a night. So they're paying you less per show and you're doing less shows. So I'm making a third of what I used to make. But as of June 1st, the comedy seller I know is going to seven days a week. I know because I'm booked. Um, That's exciting for me to be able to be back. Uh, I don't know if they're going to go back to full money. I hope so. Um, I know the Laugh Factory is getting ready over summer to go to seven days a week. I will assume Brad Garrett will do that also. Um, so we're we're coming back, but the governor will not let go of the mask mandate, and um, so we still have to wear a mask. But what's happening is a lot of people are getting fed up and just going into business and going, you know, not not putting on a mask. Go fuck yourself. It doesn't and fighting really- it. I mean, Fauci even said that when this first came out. He's like, a mask is, it might make you feel a little better, but it's not really going to afford you any protection. No. You no, know, he's wearing two of them. So it's like, make up your fucking mind. Yeah. No, it's, it's, and it's been a year. So it, you think there has been studies that have been done by qualified professionals that say the mask does nothing. When you even buy a box of those paper masks, it says on the box, this will not stop any contagious virus, uh, you know, cold, vi- you know, COVID, uh, anything. It, 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 it's just you want to wear a mask. And then, um, but you think somebody would have done a study by now and said, okay, so these paper masks, the, what are the other doctor masks? They got a technical um, name, the M1, years. Yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. Um, and and your 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 basic handmade mask with a piece of fabric or a piece of nylon or a t-shirt you think somebody would have done a study for all these different types of masks and right. their uses and what their effect on this is nothing's been done so it means it's all bullshit to me and that's me and will i wear the mask because I got bigger fights in my life right now that I uh, want to fight. Uh, I'll just put it on. But what's great about the mask is, you know, I'll just use a Kleenex. Because, you know, this is me walking around the casino. And, you know, there's those always those really ugly people. And then you're like this. And you're like this. You know, you're like. But underneath the mask, I'm going, oh, 
Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you can say things too. Yeah. They don't oh, know. Oh my God. Who yeah. Yeah. I'm seriously. It's like, here I am. He goes, ma'am, 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 you, you have to wait till we seat you. And you're like, <laughs> you're gonna have to relearn how to censor yourself after I the know. match. I because I am. I'm gonna be walking around going, "Oh, fat oh, bitch! Look at that fat bitch! Oh, <laughs> shit! They can see my mouth now." <laughs> like there was one in the casino. Okay, you're not you. You're not supposed to label people, right? You can't use certain words, right? You're not supposed to just. But okay, picture her. Picture her. Twenty-two, twenty-three. Extremely overweight. Black spandex pants, black shoes, black top, black backpack, short, spiky pink hair, and a Hello Kitty tattoo on her cheek. And you know what? You know what she was. Yeah, half a pack of Newports and five bucks. Listen, yeah, black okay. is very slimming. <laughs> no. no, single. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> single. You were supposed to say Antifa, bastards. Oh, oh. I don't even like to think about them. No. Oh no. You no, know, you know, we have a rule. We have a rule of three here: no politics, no religion, and no Brett Favre. <laughs> so what? Okay, now you just open up that can of bullshit. <laughs> so what's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers? People are like, "Oh, Aaron Rodgers is just a diva." And 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 baby get get and I go well, you be one of the top MVP quarterbacks in the country and still don't have, you know, a, a Super Bowl playoff because the team doesn't want to build a team for you. What are your guys' thoughts on that? What's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers? I say you should go get the fuck out. I of Green think Bay. you should go too. I yeah. agree. I mean, they've already proven if they wanted to prove that they wanted, like you said, to build a team around him, their first pick would have been an offensive player a wide receiver or somebody that can help him, but instead they went with a defensive player. They're almost saying, fuck you. We're going to do it our way. They picked a quarterback. Well, they what picked the a quarterback a few years back. See, look, I think he should go, and then Bill Belichick will pick him up for yes. the Patriots, and then there they go. Well, <laughs> you know, I think San Francisco offered the number three pick in the draft and also, I think uh, their quarterback Garoppolo. and Garoppolo and a couple of picks, and they turned them down. And I was like, that would have been a perfect thing to do. Take yeah. that pick yeah. in the draft. Well, and if he doesn't He's... want to play there, why would they keep him there? Right, I mean, right. Well, again, it's it's like, it, to me, it's just like what happened with Brett Favre. And it's just my opinion, what I saw. They didn't want to support him. They didn't want to help him get the team to a playoff. So they didn't want him anymore. And he said, fine, if you don't want me, I'll, I'll go. I can still play. I'll go play somewhere else. I mean, look what Tom Brady did. Tom Brady gave the biggest fuck you to the New England Patriots yeah. in the history of the of the game. The biggest fuck you. It was like fuck you, Bill. Fuck you, Bill Belichick. And I hate Tom Brady. Okay, I'm sick of hearing Tom Brady. What My favorite firm. I just. It, I was just. It's like we're, we're sick of it. But then when I was rooting for him. When he went to um, Tampa. Tampa, you were rooting for a fuck mm -hmm. you, is what you were rooting for. He's a big is, that a bad, is it a bad time to tell you that Tom's a huge Patriots fan? I'm just an <laughs> asshole all around. Why you gotta keep piling up? Here's, okay, here's here was my best burn ever in the history of me being a comedian. Okay. Um, we're at a friend's party, Super Bowl, Eagles, Patriots. Was that three years ago, four years ago? Mm -hmm. And uh, a uh, really good friend of mine in Las Vegas, Rick D'Elia from Boston, loves Tom Brady, would have Tom Brady's baby if Tom Brady would let him get within 10 feet of him. He just uh, loves the Patriots and loves Tom Brady. So I says, are you coming to Troy's party to watch the Super Bowl? No. So all you fuckers are going to be talking shit about Brady or shit about, I just want to stay home and watch my game on my TV with nobody interrupting you know, or anything. So we get to the party and there's about 30 people at this party. And as you know, the Patriots lost. So as they're losing, me and Rick, Derek Richards, who are, the three of us are like the trifecta of goofballs in Vegas. We're very, very good friends. We're texting 
Rick Delia. Patriot you're losing. What the fuck's going on? Fuck you. Fuck you, bitches. Fuck you, assholes. Every time Philadelphia scores, boom, Philly scores. And he goes, fuck you, Dunbar. He goes, I'm going to block you. So I texted back, well, at least somebody from New England knows how to block. Oh! <laughs> oh, wow. He didn't talk to me for two weeks. Oh. Um, yeah. But uh, no, I was like, you know, you're right. If Here's this great seven freaking Super Bowls. And Belichick wanted him to go away. I never understand that. And they're doing that with Aaron Rodgers. So he's... I'm sorry. Uh, you could call him a diva, but he's one of the best quarterbacks in the game. And you're either going to take me somewhere with this team, or I will go somewhere that will. Because I, I guarantee you, there's there's teams all over the country now just going. Ha, 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 ha. I didn't mean to turn you on, asshole. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going. We could. We got a shot at getting Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I don't think Green Bay appreciates what they've got. So, yeah, go. If you can go somewhere else, and then we'll see. But I think to, what Tom Brady did, I think Aaron Rodgers looked at that and went, holy shit, I should, I should go somewhere else. Maybe well, I should try that, that. Through the whole Favre debacle, Aaron Rodgers sat there and kept his mouth shut, didn't say a word, didn't get involved. He waited for his time, and then he excelled. Yeah. You should treat that man, give him whatever he wants, man. Right. Honestly. And he doesn't even ask him for money. He's asking for a team. He's not saying, oh, you just got to pay me more fucking money. He's saying, no, I need, I need a better, uh, I need a better offense. This is what I need. And they, and they didn't do it. So, you know, you, if it's any relationship, you know, when somebody disrespects you, you you can give them another chance, but then how many chances before you go? Yeah, I got to move on. Tom, yeah. Molly, you hey, hearing this? Let's, uh, <laughs> no. Molly, I, are you picking here. up when I'm laying down here for you, girl? Are you picking it up? <laughs> Listen, I have to tell you, Tom did a monologue. I'm, I'm going to say it one more time, Molly. Victors, victors. <laughs> I'm going with his mom after this. Hey, girl! <laughs> Tom did tell a monologue. Tell Hurricane I sent you. Sorry, William. Tell Hurricane no, I sent you. I have to tell you that Tom did a monologue that was probably his best monologue that he had ever done. And uh, Molly had accidentally had the audio off. <gasps> <laughs> so the shit hit the fan. And then when they put it yeah. live, or it was live, but when they re- broadcast it tom made molly read the jokes and then he heckled her and i was like she's not gonna put up with that much more he's, that like, he's like here i know how we fix it you you read my jokes and we recorded them separate and i read his jokes it was actually pretty good it worked out <laughs> oh boy so i don't know that's just my thinking on aaron Rodgers. when i heard that that was a big topic, uh, him going to Denver, but I guess that's not a dumb deal. I guess it's still. No, nah, he'll sit out this year. Do you think he shook up? Uh, do you think he shook up Green Bay? Do you think Green Bay was kind of like, oh, fuck, we got to get our shit together? You know? I think all those old men are set in their ways that when you hit a certain age, you're going to fall off a cliff. And they think Rogers hit that. I don't think he not hit everybody's... it at all. He's got a lot more in the tank, man. Yeah. Oh, he's, are, are you kidding me? Yeah, he, he's not going away. He's not going to retire. I no, thought I he would have retired, but I, but I think, I don't think he'll sit out either. So somebody's going to grab him. Uh, I don't think uh, he's I, getting I, rid of him. I, it's going to cost a lot to get him. So, well, that, I mean, that does come a point where, where, where how much money, but didn't Tom Brady go to like uh, Tampa for like almost nothing? Yeah, bag Just of juice to, fruit or something. Because no, you know, there, there comes a point where you don't you don't need the money anymore. Well, Tom yeah. Brady was a free agent though, so he was free to go anywhere. The oh. Packers still have the rights to Aaron Rodgers, so people are gonna have to give up draft picks or players in order to get him in a trade. So yeah. it's a little different. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, and the Packers are just I don't know. They're just stupid. They need to bring Bob Harlan back. Bob Harlan was smart at running the team. That's just my opinion. I don't know nothing. 
<laughs> all right, Kathleen Dunbar. You got funnydunbar.com to check out all your stuff. So uh, what was the hardest part about leaving Wisconsin when you when you finally decided 19 years ago? Uh, well, I had to wait a couple of weeks till I sold my house. I When I made the decision, I literally wanted to get in the car and start driving. I'm not kidding. I wanted to. And it was it was weird how things magically, you know, how when you know you make the right decision, everything just falls into place. Mm-hmm. I had this job for this company out in Waukesha that I absolutely hated. I hated the people there. I hated my boss. The head of the company was a complete alcoholic. He would show up to work every day wasted. On 9-11, he was wasted because it was his birthday. So when the towers were hit and it came on the news, he decided to gather us all in a conference room to tell us what happened. And he was fucking drunk. So I'd already decided that I'm moving to Vegas. So I put my condo on the market. I had a a condo down on Prospect, uh, downtown Vegas. And um, it sold like quick. I got a huge, like twice what I paid for it five years prior. And and I was getting ready to tell my boss because I decided, okay, I'm going to leave like, was it April 26th or 27th, whatever it was. And uh, like two days, you know, a day after my closing, and hired movers to move all my furniture and um, was all ready to go in and tell my boss I quit. And I got fired. Whoa. Which was awesome because I disrespected that drunken boss one day. He had asked me about a project and it, uh, work started at eight and I would get to work about 10 after seven. I was always the first one there. I'm, I'm always the first one everywhere. If you have a party and I... Molly, and you invite me, the party starts at seven o'clock. I'm showing up about six o'clock. I just, that's just what yeah. I do. I just, I'm an asshole that way. Um, Tom's always early too. Yeah. Does he always come early too? I had a feeling. <laughs> Damn it. And I control that. <laughs> so uh, um, he's like, well, what's going on with this project? I go, dude, let me get in the door and get a cup of coffee in me. I just walked in the door. Like I have to go out to the factory and check on the project where it's at. And that pissed them off. So the great news is I was able to collect unemployment for like six months. Um, oh when I moved to Las Vegas, it was a big, like, fuck you. And they gave me a, a severance, like $3,000 severance pay for firing me. Nice. And uh, so it was like, fuck. So everything just worked out. And uh, yeah. So and I and, and then I didn't quite buy a place in Vegas yet, um, um, because I didn't know if I was going to stay there. I'm like, am I going to like it? <laughs> Three days in, I'm like, I'm not. I'm not going back to Wisconsin. So what was the hardest part? Probably just leaving my family, leaving my son, even though he was uh, uh, dating the girl he eventually married. Um, I knew he was happy. I mean, he was a grown up. He wasn't a kid. Um, that was hard, but there was nothing. I mean, it was just go happy. I was, and my best friend was supposed to move. It was her idea. She's like, let's move to Las Vegas. She's the one who introduced me to Las Vegas. And, uh, I said, yeah, this is a great idea. Um, 19 years. She's still not here. She still (laughs) hasn't come. So if I would have waited for her, I would still be in, uh, Wisconsin. So be in studio. Yeah. yeah. So it what there wasn't really anything hard. It was all pretty it, it's sometimes those decisions you make and you just know it's right because there is nothing that makes you question what you're doing. I never questioned it. It was just go. Do you still get called out in Vegas? I know when we visit there, uh everybody can pinpoint we're from Wisconsin instantly. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I had, I had two last night here in Reno, two people from Milwaukee. They just knew. Well, no, they, they, I think they follow me on Facebook. Okay. So, uh, they came up to me after the show and go, Hey, my name's Stash. It's my, uh, it's my wife, Margie. And, uh, we're from Milwaukee. And I'm like, yeah, what the fuck? You really? <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring some cheese curds, you know? But, um, 
Yeah, I get I get that a lot. Every once in a while, somebody will say to me, "I detected an accent," and I I hate my accent, but um, it but is no. what it is. I, yeah, I'm gonna tell you though, if you go to Las Vegas anywhere with Kathleen, it's like she's Sharon Stone. She, oh, shut up! They all know her, Kathleen. How you doing? The 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 valet comes and takes her car everywhere you go. She gets. Sure the red carpet treatment. <laughs> I know some people, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tom's mom has probably the strongest accent. Who that does? I that I can't quite I, place. You I, do. Well, I don't know. You guys come. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you coming with or no? Coming with where? She said or no. <laughs> coming with where are we going? I I always ask him, you want some or no? Or no. <laughs> see, see? Yeah. It's a or no. It's a or no. Is is nobody else says or no. And I don't know where the or no comes from, but Kamir wants. That's another one. Kamir wants. The craziest one that she's got is her double L's turn into an R E. So she sounds like she's talking like a pirate. <laughs> Argo get that. Argo do that for you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Argo. Yeah. Argo. Awesome. Yeah. The other one that I've been called out on, there's two I've been called out on in Las in Las Vegas that really got me into a lot of trouble. Got me just got my ass picked on when I first moved to Las Vegas, right? Um, what did we have? I don't know if they still have it in Milwaukee, but everybody had, you know, your debit card was a time card, right? T Y M eight. Yeah. So we're gonna go out to dinner. A couple of comics. And the one comic says, you know, instead of going to the cafeteria here at the casino, let's go. I know a place on Sahara Avenue will get some sushi. And I said, Oh crap, I don't have I don't have enough money. I'm going to have to go find a time machine and get some cash. <laughs> and he goes, the fuck, Dunbar? A time machine? <laughs> Will you go back to 1986 when you had 100 in your top drawer? Oh, fuck you, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> no, a time card. Oh, what the fuck, a time machine? And it just, to this day, they bust my bullet. Hey, Dunbar goes back to time and gets fucking money. <laughs> Shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> and uh, again, in a, in, in a car with a bunch of comics, and they go, uh, Kathleen, which way uh, which way are the directions? I go, well, turn right up here at the stop and go like, <laughs> 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 fuck, fuck. fuck. <laughs> the what done more to stop and go like? <laughs> 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 I gotta shut up and leave me alone. They're stopping go lights. They stop and then you go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, every once in a while the old Milwaukee gal slips out and, and busts my chops and um yeah, it's it's a bunch of what are you what are you gonna do? But I know I when I first moved to Vegas, I actually talked to some people in the business and I said, I'm thinking about taking some speech classes. Because you, you, they can do that, like they get rid of a New York accent or a British accent. And they said, no, no, leave it because you're so unique. There's nobody else that sounds like you. Like if they hear you on the radio or hear you on TV, they're going to go, that's got to be fucking done for. <laughs> There's one one comic in, Cath in Vegas. His name's Quinn Dale. Do you ever guys ever see a guy named Quinn Dale? I've worked with him, yeah. Oh, my God. He's so funny. He's so funny. He's a degenerate funny guy <laughs> and he calls me uh kathleen fucking dunbar <laughs> he, goes, <laughs> he goes i don't know if you guys know but that's uh kathleen fucking dunbar over there and i she'll call you on the fucking phone every once in a while <laughs> I go, shut up but uh yeah it is what it is and what are you gonna do you know yeah you nobody are... seems to notice it at victor's <laughs> oh there oh, you go okay. now damn she's dropping it hard wow Tell a hurricane I said hello. Hurricane. The hurricane. All right, Kathleen, we've had an awesome time. Where can we find you or where can we see you? You doing anything online or do we got to come all the way out to Vegas to see you? Well, I have a dry bar special coming out in June. I think it's June. Um, 
So uh, that'll be accessible. You can uh, catch all of that on my website, funnydunbar.com. See my schedule on there and you can see, uh, I will be posting a link to that dry bar special once it comes out. And um, that's about it. Just glad to be back to work. I'm kind of booked solid till the end of June right now. Um, oh, that's awesome. Thank you very which much. Which is such a, such a treat because it's just been, it's kind of weird though. Cause like last night we were like, you know, going to start drinking. And then we're like, yeah, I got to do a fucking show. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. you know, now that I'm back to work, uh, uh, the show seems to really be work, you know, but I'm thrilled and excited. And I love the Laugh Factory. I love Reno. Reno's a great town. It's beautiful here right now. I'm just looking outside over at the El Dorado and the uh, um, the mountains. And um I'm very lucky. I'm very blessed. And glad to know you, William. You've been a good friend. All no this years. Time. Absolutely. 100%. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. It was my pleasure. William, your son says he's going to hit up with Victor's next time he's in Milwaukee. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and um, Kathleen, I will be in uh, the World Series of Comedy uh, Satellite at uh, the Punchline in Atlanta on Friday. So oh, wonderful. Trying to get in that, trying to get in that club. So hopefully it'll go well as a it's a killer That's a great line. club. That's a great club. So well, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. thank you, asshole. Thank you, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very okay. much. And All happy right. Mother's Day, Barb. Happy Mother's oh, Day, everyone. Thank you. All right. Remember, universe, we're, we're not, not good, good enough. enough. <laughs>